Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where we're going to look at a sample speech on a broadcast on the issue of our self-obsessed generation. So this was one of the uh, exam paper, leave insert exam paper questions, and it was to broadcast on radio on the motion that we are a self-obsessed generation. Okay, so you should have looked at the elements of speech writing before beginning this lesson. So uh, we will be mentioning them as we go through. We'll be analyzing the speech. Uh, so it's important in the leave insert you're able to analyze a speech and you're able to write a speech. So we'll be doing both as we go through. Now, the key for the question here was you must acknowledge that it's a broadcast. In terms of purpose um, for your PCLM, you have to acknowledge you have an audience and that you are broadcasting on air. And you must also talk about, are we a self-obsessed generation? So you have to ask yourself, are we self-obsessed? Well, what does self-obsessed mean? It means very simply that we are obsessed by or with ourselves as opposed to other people. In other times or in other generations, people probably cared less about themselves. Now, that may be nostalgia, maybe I'm wrong on that, but... Generally, there is a notion that we are becoming more and more self-obsessed and maybe it's not all our fault. Maybe it's the fault of the way society has gone and the pressure that is put on people to look and behave in a certain way. So this is a sample speech. I'm going to annotate it as I go through. So uh, the more you can analyze a speech and annotate and see what's done, then you can take these devices and use them in your own speeches. OK, so. The motion is we are a self-obsessed generation. Okay, so I'm just going to begin with the first paragraph. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gary Ryan, and I am broadcasting live from Donegal in Ireland this evening. And tonight our topic is, are we a self-obsessed generation? Now, in terms of purpose, you've already hit the mark here by saying I am broadcasting live, where from, and that your topic. So you've hit the two things there. So wherever you are tuning in from, whether it's New York, Mumbai or Paris, I hope you are hearing us loud and clear. Now there, acknowledging the audience from around the world, okay? So addressing the audience very early on, okay? So that's something that you should do throughout and you'll notice in this speech they do this throughout. So are we the self of generation that we continually hear about in the media? Or is it all just the exaggerated ramblings of a jealous older generation? Okay, it's a bit of a rhetorical question there. Okay, so uh, again, asking the question of the audience, getting them involved. As much as I would love to lay the blame on the older generation, I'm afraid that we have become the generation who has fallen in love with itself. Okay, so uh, they've stated their, their opinion. They're for the motion. They're going to tell us now why they are, why we are a self-obsessed generation. It is ironic that as we air tonight, millions of people around the world are attending remembrance events for soldiers killed on battlefields across the globe in the two world wars. When you compare the sacrifice of these men to today's generation, we can clearly see how we have become selfish, self-obsessed and narcissistic. Now, if you've noticed there, the, the way that is laid out, selfish, self-obsessed and narcissistic. You'll notice um, if you have watched the video, you'll notice that that is triadic structure. OK, that things said in threes have uh, kind of hit, hit home more. So selfish, self-obsessed and narcissistic. It flows better. So in speech writing, it's very good if you can analyze a speech and highlight triadic structure. Even better if you can use it in your own speech. Millions of men laid down their lives in a bid to end oppression, fascism and bigotry. Again, you'll see triadic structure. Last year, 256 people died trying to get the perfect selfie. If that doesn't illustrate how far we've fallen, I don't know what will. Now, I'm sure that stat is completely made up, but see the way it hits home and it also creates a contrast to the, the generation who died on battlefields across the world fighting for an idea fighting for an ideal, fighting for democracy uh, as opposed to fascism. Um, 256 people died trying to take the perfect selfie off the top of buildings and things like that. So you created a contrast and it really does highlight that the there is a difference in these generations. For our American viewers out there, should be listeners, okay, um, not on TV. Well, maybe they are, maybe they're broadcasting live. 
on Facebook. Many of you will remember your former president, Dwight Eisenhower. He was a World War II five-star general who led his troops into battle in the most dangerous battlegrounds of Europe. He was a hailed a hero for his courage and valour and eventually ended up in the White House as Commander-in-Chief. A fitting tribute to a brave and noble man. Today in the chair he once sat is the very embodiment of the self-obsessed generation, President Donald Trump. The only battle that Trump has ever fought is the battle against old age, a battle he is very much losing and with little honour or dignity. Okay, again, contrast between Eisenhower and Trump. Okay, and the fact that Trump, I suppose, to all, for all intents and purposes, is a reality TV star kind of highlights where we're coming from. Dwight Eisenhower was a five-star general who went on to become the president. That was the calibre of man that we looked for um, in the 50s and 60s, and now we're looking for reality TV stars. Kanye West was actually went for president this year as well. Kind of highlights how we've moved away from... Um, traditional set of values for our elected representatives. Okay, so it's another. It's it's suppose it's 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 a funny little story. That there's a bit of humour in there, but there's also a, a clear message there as well. The fact that the American people feel that Trump is presidential material says a lot about the current generation. When we compare him to the likes of JFK, FDR, and even Obama, we can see how our attitudes and morals have changed so much over the years. What is the cause of this change? I hear you ask. Well, for me, the big change is social media, the driving force behind our self-obsession. So it's clever maneuver, kind of a pivot towards from self-obsession into social media. There's so much you can write about social media and it is, it's a clever pivot that allows you to bring social media in and it allows you to enhance your argument as well. Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat are the three most popular social media platforms across the globe and are used frequently by nearly all teenagers. These sites are based on followers, likes and comments and nowadays one's self-value and self-esteem is predicated on the number of likes you receive each day. This unhealthy culture leads to people taking pictures in ridiculously dangerous places which can often lead to the deaths I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast. Now, that may seem very innocuous there but that's purposely put in there to remind the examiner that they remembered, that you remembered this is a broadcast. You're highlighting that you know the purpose of your speech. It has also led to the idea you must strive for the perfect look before posting a photo online. The reason that people feel so much pressure to be perfect is their obsessive scrolling on the pages of celebrities or influencers. These people have millions of followers and post pictures on a daily basis where they look absolutely perfect. In reality, these photos have been doctored using Photoshop in order to create perfection. But to the impressionable teenager, this is a look that can be achieved if they only ate less, trained harder, or bought the right products. Okay, that's also triadic structure. Ate less, trained harder, or bought the right products. Okay, so that three laid out there. This insecurity is what is driving the self-obsessed generation that we have become. And to all you viewers out there, I want you to know that this is driven by multi-billion dollar companies. You're probably sitting at home right now, again, highlighting that the people listening are sitting at home, thinking, what is this guy talking about? But the self-obsession is the result of a marketing ploys of big business. Marketing campaigns have always played on our psychological insecurities, but in today's world, they have taken it to the next level. Companies have realized how much time teenagers spend on the internet and watching TV. So they spend millions targeting you and your insecurities no matter what you are doing. Influencers are paid obscene amounts of money to use products in their videos, which implies that if you buy this product, you'll look like them. We are constantly being reminded of our flaws and imperfections when we see these images, and this causes us to spend more and more money in order to make us feel better about ourselves. They've laid a trap and we have willingly jumped into it with no thought for ourselves or anyone else. Now, we there, use of personal pronouns. So it's important when you're making speeches like this that you include yourself. Uh, I think I, I said in another video with Leonardo DiCaprio who did a speech on climate change and he kept saying we. And when a celebrity like that says the word we, he's acknowledging that we're all in this together and people listening goes, well, well he's one of us. It, it creates a kind of togetherness. Okay, now we'll begin the next one with, with a quote. And it's a great way to, to um, bring your speech forward is, is to include a quote from a famous person, none more so famous than Shakespeare. I, he once said, I once cried because I had no shoes until I saw a man with no feet. Okay, great quote. 
Um, and again, I suppose it, it's highlighting that um, we all have our own problems, but if we look around, there are those with far, far more problems or far more problematic lives. This type of observation led Shakespeare to appreciate what he did have rather than focus on what he didn't. But how many of you out there this evening ever contemplate how lucky you are? Okay, great example of a rhetorical question. Okay, do we appreciate how lucky we are? You're getting the audience to think about that. We seem to have lost our ability to empathize with others while focusing exclusively on ourselves. And I believe that is because of the role models we looked up to today. Previous generations had Gandhi, Martin Luther King and Mother Teresa. Today's generation has the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, again, the contrast there. And I suppose there's an attempt uh, at humour there that these are our um, role models today. The messages we are sending to the next generation are frightening. We need to take stock and reevaluate what is important in life. That's a bit of a call to action that we need to reevaluate. And I think, and, and any even this was written, uh, I think, three years ago. Yeah, more so today, we need to reevaluate what is important. As the Amazon burns, does it really matter that your lips aren't as full as you'd like? Again, contrast and, and highlighting how ridiculous things are. While tsunamis hit the poorest regions in the world, does it matter if your six pack isn't as per prominent as a professional boxer? Rhetorical questions here as well. While war tears families apart across the globe, is it really necessary for you to have the latest trainers? Let's just be thankful that when the world needed the heroes that are being remembered around the world today, we had men, women and children who understood that some things are bigger than the individual, that sacrifices had to be made for the greater good and that for caring for others is more important than caring for yourself. So this was actually written in November and I think it was, it was I'm not sure uh, what the anniversary was. Um, it could have been the, uh, it was probably 2018. So you're, it was probably the 60th or 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. Um, it was in November time or around Remembrance Day. So um, that was there's a constant reference in this to Remembrance Day. So those uh, rhetorical questions again here, really, really important as well. Let's honour the sacrifice of those people by being the generation that turned it around. Let's be the generation who said stop. Let's be the generation that ditched the social media culture and the narcissism that comes with it. Let's be the generation that we can be proud of. Okay, so finishes with a call to action. Okay, let's no longer be the self-obsessed generation. Let's be the generation that we can be proud of. Okay, so that's the end of that speech. Um, and for more speeches like this, you can go to endersenglishnotes.com where there are a number of, of speeches. Um, I'll be doing videos over the course of the next couple of weeks on each one. Uh, and again, um, use these speeches to analyze, find out the devices used and then try and use it on your own um, speeches as you, you, you write your own. It's important that you're, you're comfortable writing speeches before you go into the